The other day I was watching a YouTube video by one of my favorite YouTube channels, GCN, Global Cycling Networks, a channel about cycling and I quite like cycling. I'm not fast, I'm not good, but I like cycling, like people talking about cycling. So here was a video that gave me an idea of presenting an alternative presentation of a methodology that's very important for my students to learn, the dip in dip methodology. The link to the GCN channel and the, to the particular video are in the notes to this video, as are the link to the uh, fantastic uh, little logos used in this video by the Noun Project. So, GCN people, you, you quite like a bit of science, so the methodology I'm going to explain using your example, and forgive me the slightly school teachery tone here, um, is the same methodology John Snow used to figure out what the reason of the cholera outbreak was in the 19th century. So here we go. In this video, there are two of the presenters in the channel, uh, Sai and Oli, and they want to test whether a particular bike, let's say this one, this bike here, is faster than this bike. Now, in this video, the potentially faster bike is a time trial bike uh, cycled by Jan Ulrich from Germany. And the, the reason why this video triggered something in me is because I remember spending a fantastic weekend in Paris on the Champs Elysees when Jan Ulrich actually won the Tour de France. Now, admittedly, he wasn't only fueled by water and electrolytes, so it's a um, tainted victory, but that's uh, not the issue here. So Sai and Oli want to test whether that fast bike is potentially or is really faster than uh, than the other bike. So here's a setup which you see actually quite quite often in the show. Let's say it's morning in a day. So here we have AM and Sai takes out the potentially slow bike for a ride on a test track. Okay, it's a fixed route and they take the time in that. Now let's say in the morning it's quite windy and rainy, for instance. So they take the time and actually Oli goes out under the same condition, basically immediately afterwards on exactly the same route, uh, on exactly the same slow bike. Then there's some time elapses. We don't never we never quite know how much time elapses in between, but presumably enough such that, and that is sort of quite important for the methodology, both Sai and Oli have fully recovered such that their next effort that they can again go full gas because that's what they do in these uh, in these little time trials. So let's say it's after lunch. And when I say after lunch, I'm assuming that none of them had a big uh, bag of fries uh, such that in the afternoon they're a little bit tired and heavy. Okay, so they're still under tip top condition such that they can go 100%. So then the afternoon, the following setup, same test track, Sai cycles now takes out the potentially faster bike and the conditions most likely have changed slightly. Some perhaps not a lot, but the condition, let's say an hour or two elapses, conditions are slightly different. So the time is taken and then Oli goes out. Again, the same condition as Sai in his second ride, the same potentially faster bike, the same time. And then what we often do here in the in these videos is that we take the time Sai has in his second attempt and we subtract it from the first time. Okay, so we take the second time, subtract it from the first time. And what do you get? So you get a time difference. Now, what's that time difference due? Now, the track is the same, so any time difference is not due to the track. So that sort of cancels out. The rider is the same, and we said in both situations, sort of fully fit. Okay, that's why we needed a bit of time between the two bike rides. So the difference in the time is going to be due to the effect the different weather conditions have, plus the effect the different bikes have. And then we do exactly the same for Ollie. We take the time Ollie has in the second attempt in the afternoon, we subtract it from the time Ollie had in the first attempt. And the difference here, what is it due? Well, it's not due to the track because that cancels out, it's the same. It's not due to the rider because it's the same rider, fully fit on both occasions. So again, the difference is due 
to the effect the different weather conditions have plus the effect the different bikes have. So what have we achieved here? Well, we certainly figured out something, you know, is due, the time difference is due to something. Because it's a bike show and not a weather show, what we are really interested in, what is the effect the different bike has? But what we have calculated is the effect on the time of the different bikes and the different conditions morning and afternoon on the two bike rides. So this is certainly informative and interesting, but perhaps not focusing on or identifying exactly what we want, the difference in the bikes. So what could we do? And that is sort of the methodology used by many social scientists and uh, amongst others, he possibly wouldn't consider himself at the time, a social scientist, John Snow, um, thinking about the uh, cholera outbreak. So let me get my red pen back. Here we go. So Psi does exactly the same as in the previous scheme. Same test track in the mornings, takes the slow bike, perhaps under not so good weather conditions in the afternoon, all that matters is it's potentially different weather conditions, same test track, but now the fast bike. Okay, and we can, and then again we subtract the afternoon time from the morning time, and what do we get? Well, the test track cancels out because it's the same. The rider cancels out because it's the same as before. The difference is time in time is due to the uh, difference. I didn't want this one here, the difference in weather conditions and the difference in the bike. So nothing has changed. But here's the little trick. Ollie does something different. While his morning ride is this exactly the same, same weather conditions as Sai, same track as Sai, same bike as Sai, the potentially slow one. In the afternoon, what he does is same track, same conditions as Sai in the afternoon, same rider, of course, but Ollie sticks to the slow bike. Now, why is that? Why is that useful? Well, let's say we are taking the difference again, difference of the afternoon time from between the morning time and the afternoon time. So we subtract the afternoon time from the morning time. What do we attribute any time difference to? Well, not the track because it's the same, not the rider because it's the same. And on this occasion, not the bike either because it's the same. So that time difference is only due to the different weather conditions. And why does that help us? Well, now we have two differences here, but they are not sort of the same. They're not capturing the same. So if we now take the difference between these two differences, and that's where the name comes from, diff and diff, what happens? Well, this difference in weather conditions cancels out and all we are left with is the difference in the bike. The difference in time due to the bike. And that is what the diff and diff methodology does. And it does something which is sort of a little bit counterintuitive hey? in that different counterintuitive thing was that Oli had to ride the slow bike on both occasions because only that helped us to then identify, to isolate this affect the bike has on the time. So there you go. Uh, this is what Diff and Diff would do if you were to apply it in GCN. And GCN, you like a bit of science, you'll have to give it a go.